Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Welcome to a special edition of uh, Conversations with Toy. We have the elite privilege of talking to Miss Renea Brown, and she's going to talk to us about her role at, in Little uh, the Little Princess. I had the elite privilege of being able to uh, watch the show. It was an amazing show. You can get your tickets in the uh, description of the podcast. Go ahead and flood. I mean, get the tickets, watch the show. It's great for all kids of all ages, really not even just kids, people of all ages. So enjoy the this interview and let's go. Thank you for uh, taking the time to <laughs> let me interview you and talk with you. Yeah, of course. And I totally, and my whole kids, they, if they knew you were out down here, they would like, because I'm in my <laughs> office, they would just run back downstairs. I know her. And I'm like, okay, relax. Oh. Um, <laughs> but we enjoyed the, the play. We enjoyed the ability to participate. I hope that everybody does like the participation part because I felt like it just made, especially for younger kids, it made them, you know, hold their attention a lot longer. Yeah. Because you know, they yeah, were like, where's our snack? We got to get our snack. We got to get our candle. We got to get, you know, yeah. all the things. Yeah, they're involved. It's not like, um, that's what I was talking with the cast about a couple weeks ago is it's not like when you go and see a play, you sit down and you be quiet and you watch what's happening, but there's a right. call and response here now. So yeah, and I, think I, it's yeah great. I love that. Yeah. I think that's like really the best part because then like, even after the production was over, we were able to hold a better conversation with them because they felt like they were in it. So I kept saying, Oh yeah, you're going to be in this play today. So you got to get your, your material together. And that's kind of really what <laughs> Mark their energy so they were like yes we're going to be on on this thing and I can't wait so I, I like that part of it um how long did it take you guys to put this all together because I'm sure was this originally going to be like a regular production and then you guys had to switch it over to the zoom like production or was it like you guys saw that what was happening and decided to just place it all straight um in a zoom like format I assume before the pandemic hit, they probably had their season planned already. Okay. Um, and actually, I got involved with uh, Quintessence because uh, a friend of mine who I was working with at the Shakespeare Theater Company now works at Quintessence and reached out to me to do a reading of a wedding band. And so I knew that that was going to be on Zoom. So I was here in Virginia. Uh, we did the reading. Uh, which was great. And then um, I had saw maybe like a week after that, that on Playbill, mm -hmm. they were doing Little Princess and that uh, they were, they wanted to do it in Philly, but it was still going to be over. Uh, it was still going to be online. So I think okay. maybe they had the season planned, uh, but they were like, well, we have to adjust now we're going to continue with the season but we're just going to adjust and and put it online so were you so are you here or were you in virginia or are you in virginia? Uh, so i i live in virginia and uh so i went to philly for the for the show okay and so we had um i was in actor housing and so i had a studio set up so i had a backdrop but the thing is the reason why i had to be there all of us had to be there it's because we had this, the exact same backdrop, the exact same props, the same costumes, the same camera, um, the, the same, uh, se same setup, same everything to make, you know, for continuity reasons, to make, make sure everything looks the same. Uh, and it still functioned as a regular show in that I, we sort of played our own um, 
a little bit of our own stage manager as far as uh, putting our props where they need to be and taping spike marks down. Um, but we had, we still had a stage manager, but uh, we had a costume designer. So she would come and drop costumes off. She would wash them. And if I said like, Oh, I, I kind of need this to be taken in, then she could pick them up and take them in and drop them back off. Okay. Uh, so, so there, so it still functioned as uh, like a real show, which was pretty cool. Or if we had any issues, I had, uh, a couple audio issues and uh, the production assistant would run across the street from the theater over to my to my place fix the audio run back over uh, and so so you had to be there in the same city now will you guys be doing the same thing now that you guys are going back into the the encore presentation are you guys gonna are you gonna be coming back everybody's gonna be coming back to one location no it's actually been recorded Oh, that's right. Uh, that's so, right. So that's right. Play. That's yeah. right. Also, y'all don't. I think we'll do. We'll do a couple talkbacks too. Okay. Talkbacks. Okay. So, what other productions? Like, this is—is is this your first production? How many other productions have you been involved with? Like, talk a little bit to me, like how your acting life has been. What really got you started in in this business? Because. I'm really interested in seeing, like, hearing about that part of your life. Like, how did this all come about? Well, uh, I'm going to say that my parents are responsible because <laughs> uh, my uh, daddy was, he's retired now, but uh, he was in the military. And I remember we, we uh, settled in uh, Kentucky, so I didn't move, I didn't move around a lot as much as my older sister did, but uh, okay. we would go and visit him uh, when he went to drills or if he was uh, gone for a while. And I remember that we would have to take these long drives. And, I, you know, as a kid, it's like, what am I going to do in a car? Uh, and it just sort of came out of nowhere. I would watch a movie and watch it over and over and over. And my mama would be like, oh, my goodness, watch a different movie. Why don't you, you know, change, change the movie? Uh, but unknowingly I was memorizing the movie just so I could say it and I could mimic people really well uh so when I got in the car it was like oh well now I have a movie that I can play and I can play it until I fall asleep or right. um or until it's over and so at one point my mama was like you know there's a there's a school where they can teach you how to be like the people in the movies um it's a performing arts school so I auditioned for, for that when I, I had to be eight and, uh, wow. and I got in. And so I, we had majors and minors. I was majoring in theater and minoring at in eight? dance at eight. Yes. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. And I stayed there until uh, I graduated high school. And uh, that's, that's where I started to learn like, oh, this is more than just me wanting to be on uh, TV. This is, this is us reading these classic plays, these classic, the classic American canon, and, and really delving into the text and going, well, why do you think this story is being told? And well, why do you think uh, this character fits into this play? So uh, that opened the door for me to go, oh, I actually think I want to be on stage uh, as opposed to TV, because on stage you get one chance to do it and to do it well. Um, but you, over a span of time, I get to keep working on something, keep crafting it, keep sort of obsessing over it until it's over, and then I can do a new one. Uh, and that that really piqued my interest. And so when I got to college, I studied theater there, uh, and then I really took a liking to Shakespeare. It, it's just, it's, it's something about, it's written so extravagantly, like we don't, well, one could, one could say we're kind of uh, in Shakespearean times with, you know, as far as politics and, yes, we uh, are. you know, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we don't took a whole dip back. Exactly. Exactly. And I, it's just like, everybody is just cranked up to the max. Uh, people, people die, like literally die because they're like, oh, I just, I can't take this pain anymore. And they're dead. 
you right. know, uh, let's do I'm a just, coup. We're going to just come together and do a coup and just uprise yes. the, the government. Let's do that. Like, yes. this is, I, I don't know what century we're in at this point. Yes. People st- was like storming these, uh, these, the Capitol. It, is uh you know obviously you don't want those things to happen but it's like is this Coriolanus <laughs> like well are, I mean they, we they gonna... always say that there's nothing new under the sun right and everything repeats right. itself and it's literally holding form we are literally repeating every possible way yes and the only thing that's changed a little bit is the language and that's what I fell in love with was just the uh, you know we it's cliche to say the Titan language but it is we don't we don't speak that way anymore. We don't speak in uh, uh, long metaphors or these these beautiful parentheticals. Uh, right. But I love that language, so I continue. That's usually what I do is, is classical work. Wow. And then, um, so I, I've been doing it ever since, so that's why I'm here now. Oh my goodness. So how many productions have you been in? As I know you've been studying it, and I know you've done things like in college and as preparation, but like how, where, like, where are you in your journey? Like, are you, do you do so many a year? Like how many, how many productions do, are you involved with? Uh, I'd say on average uh, now as an adult, probably three to four. Okay. Um, hopefully I, I, I really try to do as much as I can. Um, I try to have as little downtime. It's probably not uh, healthy, healthy but, but it's, I, I love it. I love to work. And so what, what happens is, let's say uh, it's, it's January and I've uh, just booked a show. Let's pretend we're not in, in, uh, and not in, in quarantine. quarantine. Right, not yes. in the pandemic. Right. So I, I book a show and we start rehearsal January 1st. Well, we'll rehearse for about three weeks um, we'll go into tech the fourth week and then we'll do that show for three or four weeks. Uh, so then that's essentially two months gone. So right. then I take a bit of a break and hopefully I've booked something while I was in that show. Uh, right. and that starts at the end of March. So it's, it's sort of like, it's a, just a cycle. And in between the time when I do take a break, uh, I'm teaching Shakespeare. Where do you find the actual time? <laughs> <laughs> if you, well, I mean, if you if you love it, you'll you'll make time. I tend to I tend to make time. I, that was a new thing that I didn't realize I would enjoy was teaching. Um, I taught just a little bit. I'm from Kentucky, and I taught just a little bit there, and uh, I was doing it because I needed to make money. But then I realized that these kids. You know, if they were just like me, if you don't know anything about Shakespeare, either you love it or you don't. You don't, but right. to be on the other end of seeing kids go, and then what? And then what do you say? What? And they fall with swords? Wait, now how old are these kids? Because, you know, that matters to me because I'm not, like, my skill sets is not like I have three children, but my skill set is not to be teaching other people's kids. Oh. So how many? <laughs> what, I, I just I'm, I'm putting that disclaimer out there right now because I love yes, the kids, no, but listen. I cannot do groups of them. Um, <laughs> what are the ages age groups of the kids that you're talking to? I started I started with like fourth and fifth grade. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, when I moved to DC, that actually. Uh, fluctuate. So I, I have taught elementary, middle school and high school and adults who um, want to do uh, coaching, like if they're trying to get into a school. Uh, but I also like right now, um, I teach at the Shakespeare Theater Company, and it's mostly adults, probably like 18 and older, okay. uh, people who are interested in Shakespeare, people who are actors, but they haven't yet gotten into Shakespeare and they are, they might be a little nervous as far as the, the language is concerned. Um, so yeah, I really, the, I teach everybody. Yeah. That's the biggest, the biggest uh, hurdle in my opinion was when you break down, I love Shakespeare, first of all. And uh, when you break down the language of it, it's literally almost the same way in which we do life now. It, again, it's just the language barrier. But for me, when I was in high school, many moons ago, um, 
<laughs> I was like the kid that gravitated towards that. So I remember taking um, AP English literature just so I could get into this class. Like I knew the teacher, thankfully, so I didn't have to do pull any strings, but I was like, I need to get into this class. And it's like, I never yeah. get anybody begging to get in my class, but I was like, no, I'm that student. Like I need to get into this class. So I, yeah, I definitely understand it. And so, especially when I do like a lot of, I go to a lot of plays, if it's like anything, anything near Shakespeare, I'm like, somebody put me on a list and get me in the door. <laughs> yeah. I need to be there. Cause it's just, it's really interesting and really fascinating. Um, where yeah. do you see like, you know, I know you're doing a lot of teaching, which is amazing. And I like what you said about when you love what you do, it's not necessarily work. That's how I feel about the blog. But so many people miss that. And they're doing things that are being sort of forced because it's not natural for them to really gravitate towards it. And when I feel like when it's something that's truly natural, it's not work. Even on the days when it's like the most stressful, it's not, it's not real work. Is that, yeah. is that sort of how you feel about the whole acting and then the teaching? Like all of those things matter. Yeah, it's, you, it, it has to come to you. Um, and, and there are certain things that are for, for certain people and some things that aren't. Uh, actually, a, a good example of this is um, TikTok. This mm. app, which I love, <laughs> uh, I will you get have. on there and I'll and I'll have I'll like post a couple of fun videos, maybe like once a month or whatever. I love to watch other people's content, but there are people who that is their job. They go, I write down a script, I film 10 videos in two mm -hmm. days. That is my thing. I can't grasp that. I'm like, you you have to set up the set up your apartment, pick the different outfit. It's like doing a show. In, in 60 seconds, but I'm the costume designer, the writer, the uh, stage manager, and the, <laughs> Everything. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that I, there are people um, who love that. Yeah, that's not me. I use it, obviously, <laughs> uh, with the blog, like if I work with other companies that are like, can you do us a TikTok? And I'm like, yeah, I could do you a TikTok. I can do that. Yeah. It's an every now and again thing. I love to kind of watch people, because for me, TikTok is like a rabbit hole. I get into TikTok, and I can watch yes. that for you hours. scroll, scroll, it scroll. It just keeps scrolling and seeing. Do you ever? Do you ever stuff. get the guy who's like, "You've been scrolling for a long time." Yeah, it's and I'm trying like, to get, get off. Here. Mind your business. Let me live. Right. <laughs> and I'll just scroll right back and pass him. And keep exactly. Him I know he's gonna come and and like, you know, blow up my whole space. But yeah, I had to like take a little. I had to put TikTok in balance because it's really hard to you know it's really hard to get out of that. But yeah. you know. Like you said, it's bringing in, it's not bringing in just one set of skill, you know, with TikTok, like you have the acting and you can put on these different characters. That's something that is amazing. But then, like you said, then you got to have production. <laughs> now you need light. Yes. And now you need to do this and that. And that's no. Mm -mm. Yeah. But if you, you know that, and that's what people enjoy. And it's, it's almost like, um, I, I had a friend of mine who, was really who was really like you know we are we are shifting into that you kind of do have to get into that which which is kind of true but I'm it's like the, it is it is uh, a production when I self tape I have to put up my soft boxes I have to make sure the background is right yeah I have mine's to are memorize, behind me you know <laughs> mine's yeah are, yeah <laughs> look behind me because it's like that's kind of how this life kind of works you need certain skills you need certain tools to make your job easier or to, and that's the one thing that I feel like we've all learned in this pandemic is how to, you know, you were talking about adjusting and how you had to come down here to do everything. And then it's a lot of adjustments. You know, we can't just yeah. live our lives like we once were. Like I didn't even have shadow boxes. I was just like, I don't need that. I'll just use my little ring light and keep it pushing. But I'm like, no, I, need, <laughs> <laughs> I actually need the shadow boxes because you can't get a good shot off of the ring light sometimes re so right you have to constantly adjust and reality of it is that's really the life of an actor right an actress is you're picking up parts you're putting them down you're becoming someone for that moment you're picking it back up you know whenever the show goes back on what are you seeing as far as if i could ask you if i could just get a crystal ball and per give you your perfect role or your perfect perfect actor or actress to work with who would that be Mm, that's such a good question. 
<laughs> you know, I got to figure this out because, like I said, I want to know who you would be like <laughs> if I could link up with this one actor or actress and do this perfect role. What would that role look like and who would that person be? It's probably going to sound so silly and no. cliche, but Denzel is like I making his he's now like doing um, the, the August Wilson canon. Mm -hmm. I think yes. it's his goal to, to do the entire canon. Um, and something that I've noticed uh, in my career is like, I don't get cast in a lot of black shows yet. I haven't yet. Um, say yet. At least it's I, coming. Yeah, not yet. Uh, pro professionally. And although I've, I go out for these uh, shows, it, do, it it hasn't happened yet. And I'm like, what? I used to be really insecure about it. And I'm like, what is happening? Um, but uh, August Wilson is, is definitely what I want to jump into. And I think if I could get in one of these, I'd love to play Black Mary in Gem of the Ocean. Right. She has, um, she, she and I have a link of where she's like, you know, I, I kind of, I stay in my in my lane. I do what I'm told. I um, uh, I, I I follow directions until she says, you know what? I do things the way I do them, um, and that kind of I live that that journey. So that's definitely like on my on my to do list. Uh, I definitely want to play Black Mary. I'd love to play it when uh, Denzel is, is directing it or producing it. That would be my that would be my dream. Yeah, he is such an, a phenomenal actor. Like, there's nothing that I feel like Denzel cannot play. I mean, he's played just about everything, everything. <laughs> from the highs to the lows he's played just about everything but his you know when I hear interviews about him when I watch things about how his work ethic and how you know he's straight shooter he wants to get it right and he wants to bring every essence about him into whatever role that he's playing I think that is something to emulate so if he's your the one that you would want to work with I mean you have such a great example of hard yeah. work, determination. And his career, it's, it's, it's not all, uh, you know, he only plays superheroes. He's not typecast at all. No, he, no. For, I mean, from Training Day to Much Ado About Nothing to Troy and Fences, there's this right. huge body of work. He can do it all. So that's, that's also the kind of career that I, that I would like to have. That, yes. Listen, we that that would be amazing. What is on your horizons in the in the near future? I know you like to stay booked and busy. So, <laughs> are you already booked and busy and ready to uh, go? Right now, I'm doing a reading. We actually have a show tonight um, at American Stage. It's called wow. uh, "The Sons of Liberty" by Chris Eli Black, and uh, it's a new play, New Voices Festival, which is something that I'm getting into too. New plays, new work. Uh, because we have the classics, but what are we going to leave behind that will then become classics for, you know, for future generations? So I'm into, I'm into new works. So that'll happen uh, tonight. And then um, what's supposed to happen, what was <laughs> supposed to happen last summer, uh, I was supposed to play Helena in uh, Midsummer at the Folger Theater. And so now that's been pushed to this okay. summer. Fingers crossed it still yes. happens. Um, I think it'll happen in some sort of capacity. Uh, either in person, outdoors, or, uh, you know, maybe maybe some, something else. But and next month, I'll be doing The Tempest as a radio play. Uh, oh, wow. Which, are, which is cool now. Uh, you know, radio plays are, are older. And, the, and a lot of them, uh, you know, were sort of mystery-based. Uh, but now this is a, a sh uh, it's a Shakespeare play that you can listen to. Um, and I wonder what that's going to be. You know, I, I try to just uh, jot down things that I think about before I get into a process. And right now I'm thinking about sounds like what they're on an island. So how can I, how can I contribute to making sounds that we are on an island or when a beat shift happens? Um, so 
so yeah, I'm uh, prepping for that, reading for that, reading through that play now. Um, so that'll be, that'll be coming soon. Do you have a set of rituals that you do before a play or production start or something that you do after the fact? Like, what's your go-to preparation look like? I know everyone is different. Everyone prepares differently. And they may have like, you know, at the end when, you know, the production is over, they may do certain things that are just religiously done for them. Is there something that is like your go-tos after or before production? Uh, before production, I do, I love to do a lot of text work. I got a lot of that training from, uh, when I went to grad school, I went to George Washington University at the Academy of Classical Acting. And, uh, we, there was no sentence left unturned. Why did we use this specific word? Why did I say that, um, there was a rainbow of light instead of saying it was uh, a colorful light, a, a bright light, a shiny light. You know, all, all of those, I go way into detail um, so that when we are in rehearsal, I know the answers to whatever questions are gonna be asked. Or if I don't know the answer, then that's something that I haven't thought about. Um, so I try, to, I try to get inside of the play. I also try to find out where my personal connections are. Um, for example, with, with uh, The Little Princess, I loved that movie when I was a kid. Um, right. I watched it all the time. And I obviously connected with Becky because Becky's the only black girl. And I'm like, oh, I know what this is like. Right, but, exactly. um, but Sarah and her connection with her father, actually my cast didn't even know. We, we had, I think we were maybe like, uh, a week into the play and we went on a hike all four of us went on a hike and okay. I said something like oh yeah that was when my my dad was on tour and they were like oh so your your dad's an actor and I said no no he's uh he was in the military and at the beginning of the show when I say uh you know I would miss my father just like Sarah would uh they didn't know that that was true and I had, had a talk with uh the, with Suli our director about um talking about that in the show. So I try to find my way in, what's my connection, even if it's not to the, the character that I'm playing, so that I can be uh, as, as truthful um, during, the, during the process. And that's, that's even with uh, people who we, who we call villains. Mm, we don't yeah. just inherently wake up a bad villain. people. Right. We have like you got to go somewhere one. inside of you to find some type of skill or some type of connection. Cause I would not be able to, I probably would. Somebody probably would be like, yeah, you could, but who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I about your know how to like get into that, into costume or get into preparation for that. Your it's about your wants and needs. I mean, we, you know, uh, uh my wants and needs are different from someone who may live in a third world country. I know that my water is waiting for me when I get in the shower and that I can stay in there for 30 as minutes. As long as you need, right. Exactly. Whereas someone else may say, I, I have to spend like two minutes with this water and then I have to, you know, I don't know, I don't know, leave it or, or save it or whatever. Right. Whatever, uh, you know, I just have to adjust whatever my wants and needs are uh, for that role. So that's, that's what I, that's a little bit of preparation that I do. And then after each show, um, I have to throw the script away. I can't, keeping it is like, um, it's a baggage that makes me feel anxious. I have to throw mm. it away. Even if it's one of these, um, Actually, this is uh, one script for Midsummer that I'm working with. After I'm finished with this, I will throw it away. Uh, wow. Because it has notes and stuff. And I may play this role again. So I don't want to rely on uh, 2021 Renia to do a 2024 Helena. Um, I never would have thought that, is that different. like that. Wow. You know, yeah, that would be good it. for someone. That's a word for somebody who's dealing with uh, this little clutter demon uh, that people do with when <laughs> you want to hold on to a thousand one things because we always evolve and change. We're not the same person that we were last month, this month, last year. Exactly. That's, that's, um, that's actually some good advice. 
face <laughs> for somebody else who's not even an actress uh, at all. Like you may want to just, you know, leave a couple things in its past. So then what does your, like, when you're going to, to, um, uh, what is it called? I can't even think. I'm having a, a moment. When you're going to a, to a read and let's say, oh, you're going to, oh, what is it? Um, can't think. When you're going to audition, there we go. Okay. What is the process like for you? Like when you don't get it, like what, what do you do? Do you have something that you do to kind of get you past that point? Do you just move on to the next thing? Like, how is your mindset around rejection? Uh, it depends on how badly I, I wanted something. Um, at this point in my career, I don't audition for anything that I'm not really interested in anymore. I was at, I was, uh, about four years ago where I wanted to just work, work, work. Um, okay. But if, you know, if, if, if I uh, missed out on something that I really wanted, um, I always call my mama and I tell her, uh, you know, I did this and I did that and I did everything right. And I, I know exactly what she's going to say, but to hear her say, you know, first of all, Renia, you can't be in everything, you know, you can't, you can't do everything. I, I hear that and I, you know, I accept that. Um, but she always says, but this, this isn't changing who you are, what kind of talent you have, you know, it might be, um, it just wasn't right for you it, or it wasn't your time. Um, you know, and she'll say, it'll come around again or something better will come around. And 90% of the time she's, she's right. Whatever happens in that time, especially if I'm really, um, upset by it, something else will come along and I'll get perked up and go, Oh, Oh, this is the thing that I was supposed to be doing instead of that other thing. Um, I don't think, I think there's, there's just one thing that I've been uh, holding on to for years. It, it was uh, from college where I studied this show inside and out for months because I knew it was happening uh, in advance and I didn't get cast. And uh, the, the director was like, I know how badly you wanted it, but you aren't the right age. It just, it was not right for you. In a couple of years, you'll probably get this role if, if this, you know, show goes up. So I always try to think about that, like, it's going to make its way around again. And I may need this time to prepare myself for that. I may not be right. ready to play that, that role or something better is, is coming. I mean, that's a good way to think about it, because I can imagine, like I said, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine how often you may be auditioning or, you know, what that that would feel like. I know some people kind of I know I've talked to other um, actors and actresses. They're like, you know, sometimes it depends on if I have something else. I may then go into like a little shell and then I have to come back out. And that's why I was just like, mm -hmm. what is your your go to? Because, you know, that fear or not I want to call it a fear but that rejection is always present in this field like there's yeah. no real way of getting around it and I know like my daughter she wants to like go into art and things of that sort and I told her art is very subjective so you're going to have to be able to roll with the punches when someone is like eh, I'm not really feeling this piece or they may be feeling that piece and not make it not necessarily break down or you know crumble at the first times or set of times when someone doesn't think that your art is, you know, art or is, or is not beautiful or anything like that, because, right. you know, this is the real reality of life. And this is the type of field that you're going into anything in the arts, anything related to that, whether it's in print form, whether it's acting, no matter what it is, like you, you're going to have to have a thick skin. You oh know, yeah. About you and it's not, to that. You, ha you have to get out of the uh, space of taking things personal because um, it really can be a make somebody was better than you, or it can be something like, ah, but, the, and it's, it's messed up, but it's like, ah, our leading guy is five, eight and Renia is five, eight and a half. Well, no, we're going to have yeah. to get somebody who's about five, seven. It can be something as simple as that. Um, so I try to remember not to take things personal and that it's, it's none of my business. Actually, the director of my program, Alec Wild, he taught me that. 
stop, stop wondering, stop dwelling on, well, why not me? Why not me? It's none of my business. It's, it's gone now. Um, right. I did what I know I needed to do and I felt good about it uh, in the room. So that's what I did. I didn't do anything wrong. Um, that's none of my business. And the more that you uh, kind of keep going to auditions or the more tapes you keep sending off, it's easier to forget like, oh, if you get an email, you're like, oh, I forgot I even did that. Did yes, that. I'll come right. to callbacks at this time or, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, try not to take anything personal and remember it's, it's none of your business really. Now, just one last question. How do you balance you know, I know you said you like to be busy, but how do you balance or even practice any form of self-care in the midst of one, this pandemic, and number two, in the midst of just life in general, even if there wasn't a pandemic, like how do you balance, how do you self-care, how do you take care of you? Take these out because <laughs> they're dying. Um, I, get, I know you, mine's over here too, charging. <laughs> okay, you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Oh, okay. Uh, why do I... You know what? I'm still along this journey of self-care because um, I've been trying to get out of the habit of uh, blending my all of my hobbies in with the theater. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to just come home and go, you know what? I haven't read Macbeth in five months. I'm going to read it. I, I'm trying to get out of the habit and uh, out of that habit and find uh, something new that I don't really know too much about. Um, and recently it's, it's been a little bit of an environmental kick. Um, I try to watch documentaries about it. I try to look at um, different kinds of plastic that I use and go, Oh, so I would, I would separate this plastic from this plastic well, what's, what's the difference between these two plastics? This is something new that I don't really, I know to recycle, but I don't really right. know uh, much about it. So I try, to, I try to find little things that I can sort of obsess over for as long as my, um, my attention span will allow me. Uh, that's why I love the theater. Not really, I mean, I haven't gone to Broadway. If I, when I, uh, am offered something on Broadway, I will definitely take it. But the um, time period is perfect for me. I'm like, oh, two months, two and a half months. Great. That's as much attention as I can give this one thing before I'm ready to, to move on. Or something else, right. Yeah. So I, so I try to do that. Um, I've been trying to be more active. Uh, the, the theater definitely makes you active. You sh really should be... Um, treating your body as if you are an athlete because the amount of breath support and uh, just the, the amount of time that you rely on your body, um, you know, for eight shows a week, that it's, it's a lot. And I've noticed during the pandemic, I've been stagnant and I'm like, well, I can just sit in my chair. I'm just doing Zoom. Um, so that's something I try to do. I try to get up and walk. I'll walk around the mall. Um, I love bar class. Uh, so yeah, I'm just trying to pick up new things that I wouldn't have otherwise. Right now, it's a little bit of an environmental kit. I like that. I like that. Well, we recycle over here too, so I, I probably need to get yes. <laughs> some more knowledge of everything. But yes, yeah, so um, I don't want to waste any. Of, well, I don't not want to waste, but I don't. No, want this has to not been a waste. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I have enjoyed our conversation. I really wanted to just get to know you more. Um, and, you know, because as a person, not just as a character <laughs> in uh, Little Princess, but as a person, as a woman, as a woman of color who's, you know, acting and trying to, you know, build her portfolio and trying to get her foot in certain doors. I know that has to be a beautiful journey, but also, you know, has this lot of highs and lows, I can only imagine. Yes. No, thank you. This is, so, it's so nice to, to um, not have to put, put the hat on and be like, I know we're doing a show. Uh, so this is, <laughs> this is uh, refreshing. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I didn't want to come from the perspective of just the show. Um, we, you know, we'll tie that in, you know, as well to make sure everyone knows to go watch it and get their tickets and things of that sort. But 
you know, just seeing who you are, bringing that element to it is another layer of when you see people as their as their character, like their character in a in a production, but you're still the person who has all of the things going on in life like the rest of us. And so that's the part that I wanted to just talk about and get to know you on a different level. And I will definitely tie it all together, a little, you know, make it look all good and stuff. But at the same time, like, you know, we're all trying to figure out where we are and what we want to do. And so I wish you nothing but blessings, not luck, but blessings as you continue you. your journey so that all of the doors that, you know, are supposed to open will just open and that you'll have such a freeing um, journey as you continue um, working on your craft. Thank you so much. Thank you. And whatever shows that I have next that are like appropriate for <laughs> for uh, your kids, I will definitely be in contact with you. And yeah, we'll and you can send the other ones that are not appropriate for them to me. As well. To you, to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But definitely the ones that are for them, because like I said, they just, you know, like I said in the blog, like my, my daughter, and I didn't even, and I'm going to show her this video because um, my hair in here is curly too, like yours. And my kids' <laughs> hair is just as curly as yours. And so they're just, yes. they get a tickle out of seeing people that look like them and doing these things. They're just like, how is this happening? What is happening? And it's so, so important. Yeah. And I'm like, and the, the right out of my daughter, my youngest and even my oldest too, they were just like, Oh, she's brown like us. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> she's brown. like when, us. when you wrote that, I cried, I screenshot it and I sent it to my mama and she was like, you don't know who you are touching little girl. And I'm like, <sighs> yes. And I'm telling you, cause that's the first thing, um, that they that they my daughters was like she's brown just brown like us and like now they're more it's like they're more aware of their environment and they're more aware of when they see people that look like them they're just like you know they get really excited I mean they're in a school where they see most people that do look like them um and they're in their pri in their private school but in the same token you know I'm always trying to push self self awareness with them and to you know, be proud of who you are, regardless of the world. And I mean, and we've had to have difficult conversations too, but in the yeah. same token, you know, I want to keep them as bubbly and as loving of themselves. And, and, and I'm teaching them, you know, how to pour back into themselves as even as little girls, like, you know, you need to start figuring out what it is you like and, and you're going to, and I tell them all the time, it's going to be up and down journey. Some things you're going to knock out the park and then there's times when you're going to have to pull yourself back up. So right. I just appreciate it. Just like them gravitating. And when they saw that without me having to say anything, I, then I knew first as a parent that that was a great thing. And then as, you know, as a, as a mother and as a woman of color, I was like, yes, I always love when I see, you know, a diverse um, uh, cast, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to me, even if they're not women of color, but just to see, uh, a, you know, a beautiful eclectic cast. I love to see that because it's not whitewashed anymore. We definitely need to have different perspectives, people bringing in different flavors and their different unique styles to the table because together we all, you know, can be so much better. But when I see a woman of color, I'm, I'm here for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Issa. I'm supporting everybody. I'm supporting everybody black. Yes. Right. And I want everybody thriving. So yeah, I appreciate that. Of course. Thank you. You're welcome. Have an amazing, sh uh, is it a reader show tonight? It's a show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not, yeah. It's the, it goes up just uh, for one night. All right. Well, I know you're going to do amazing and get all stuff together and all ready for today. So have an amazing show and I will circle back when all this is ready to go and give you a copy as well. Great. Thank you so much. And happy oh, new welcome. year. Oh, happy new year. I know 2020 <laughs> is, uh, I mean, 2021 is already interesting. So be careful this weekend. Oh, Lord. You're yes. Out, yeah, I'm going to stay, stay in the house. <laughs> like I was, my husband was like, I'm going to the store. I was like, okay, what store are you going to? Like, right, right. Let me know. Cause I need to know people where you are, you know, we've been in the house really, honestly, um, we go out very sporadically. So I'd be like, where y'all going? Where's everybody heading off to? Like, <laughs> I need to be accounted because this world is so crazy. And then with this yeah. weekend and the inauguration, I'm just more heightened, more aware and more, you know, watching of my surroundings. So be careful. Yeah.
Thank you. You too. <laughs> Be blessed. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So what did you think? Isn't she just a jewel? I enjoyed talking with her. It was probably the easiest interview I've ever done. And can we just shout out her mom and her dad? Like you have raised a phenomenal young lady and to hear her speak so highly of both of you, it's it's a blessing. So I just wanted to say thank you, Renea. And I wish you nothing but success and everything that you do and everything that you touch will just definitely prosper. Um, everyone else, make sure you grab those tickets, get and watch that show. It's going to be amazing. You will not regret it. Until next time. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.